Hello, good afternoon. Uh, so, I am Professor Anuradha Jain, Professor of Economics at Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies. In this session, we are going to discuss about what are the modern theory of inflation, how it works, why there is a need to control inflation and how to control inflation. The modern theory of inflation follows the theory of price determination. So, there are mainly two shocks to inflation. One is aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So, the inflation caused by increase in aggregate demand is known as demand pull inflation. And if price increases due to increase in the cost of production, then it is known as cost push inflation. The modern theories of inflation are in fact the blend of classical and Keynesian theories of inflation. The classical theory laid emphasis on the role of money that is the price rises in proportion to the supply of money and ignored the non-monetary factors affecting inflation. While the Keynesian theory laid emphasis on non-monetary factors that is aggregate demand in real terms and ignored the effect of monetary expansion on the price level. The modern theories of inflation shows that the price level is influenced by one or both of the demand side and the supply side factors. The factors which are functional on the demand side are called as demand pull factors and those who operate on the supply side are known as cost push factors. So, there are two types of you know inflation or causes of inflation you can say. One is the demand pull inflation as per the modern theory and the other is the cost push inflation. And in this we will also be you know just talking about wage push theory, profit push theory or supply shock. Now, first let us see the demand pull inflation. So, Keynesians, uh, you know, argue that there can be an autonomous increase in the aggregate demand or spending such as a rise in consumption demand or investment demand or government demand spending or a tax cut or a net increase in the exports that is C plus I plus G plus X minus M because the aggregate demand is uh, you know calculated as C plus I plus G plus X plus minus M. So, C here is the consumption demand, I is the investment demand, G stands for government demand, X stands for exports and M stands for imports. So, with no increase in the money supply also, if any of this increases like whether consumption demand, investment demand, government demand or foreign demand increases then that leads to increase in the price and this would prompt you know upward adjustment in the prices. So, in this diagram uh, you can see right hand side you know there are aggregate demand initially the aggregate demand is AD1 ok that is the initial demand uh, in the economy. Now, because of any reason might be like suppose consumption demand increases or investment demand increases. So, that will lead to shift in the aggregate demand curve. So, this shift in the aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2 that you can see in the diagram and there is a supply curve, aggregate supply curve. There are two aggregate supply curve here you can see one is upward sloping that is short run you know aggregate supply curve. And long run aggregate supply curve is vertical line that you can see. Why in long run uh, there is vertical line? Because in long run when all resources are occupied, then there is no you know way to increase the output. So, therefore, output remain constant in long run. So, in this you can see that when aggregate demand curve shift from AD1 to AD2. So, initially there was a price P1. And later on you can see where short run aggregate supply curve intersects to the new aggregate demand curve AD2, then price increases to OP2 from OP1. So, thing here is that when there is increase in the aggregate demand that will lead to shift in the aggregate demand curve and which will lead to increase in the prices. So, this type of 
increase in the prices which is due to the shift in the aggregate demand then that is known as demand pull inflation. Another is cost push inflation. So, in addition to aggregate demand, aggregate supply also generates inflationary process. You know, as inflation is caused by a leftward shift to the aggregate supply curve, we call it a cost push inflation. Cost push inflation is usually associated with, you know, non-monetary factors because cost push inflation arises due to increase in the cost of production. Cost of production may rise due to price in the cost of raw material or increase in the wages, whatever is the component of the cost here. So, in this diagram you can see like AD is the aggregate demand curve and the initial aggregate supply curve is SRAS1 that is shortened aggregate supply curve 1 and the original price you can see is OP1. But when aggregate supply goes down, so aggregate supply curve will shift to the left. Now, why aggregate supply curve is going down? Here, why it is known as cost push inflation? Because when cost of production increases, maybe because of like cost of raw material, cost of wages, whatever be the reason. Now, instantly it is not possible for the investor, for the businessman to increase the price of the output. So, what happens is that the profit margin of the businessman goes down and when profit margin goes down, they will invest less and new investors will not invest in that product where already investors are you know earning less profit and therefore overall supply of the product goes down and that is the reason that supply curve shift to the left and if when supply curve shift to the left then that will lead to increase in the price of the commodity. So, this type of inflation which is due to the increase in the cost of production which in turn reflects in the aggregate supply curve is known as cost push inflation. Okay, so, <coughs> till now what we have seen is like according to modern economists there are two main reasons or two main types of inflation. One is demand pull and the other is cost push. And we have also seen in the earlier session like how it impacts, how harmful it is for the economy, okay, if it is a very high rate of inflation. So, therefore, control of inflation becomes very, very important task for any policy maker of the country. So, how do we control inflation? What are the different instruments to control inflation? Okay, so that we will discuss now. So, economists hold the view that the inflation beyond a moderate rate is undesirable as it can prove disastrous and therefore, if inflation crosses the desirable rate, it must be kept under control. Economists agree also that an appropriate mix of fiscal and monetary policy can be helpful in controlling inflation. But however, you know there is a divergence of opinion on the effectiveness and primacy of fiscal and monetary policies in the policy mix. While monetarists argue that monetary measures should be given prime role in the anti-inflationary policy mix, fiscalists argue on the contrary that fiscal policy is more effective in controlling inflation. Besides, even the very issue of controlling inflation poses a dilemma because controlling inflation involves the risk of accentuating the problem of unemployment. Several other measures to control inflation have been devised and suggested in addition to fiscal and monetary policies. So, in nutshell, measures to control inflation remain a controversial issue. The various measures to control inflation are generally classified as follows like inflation, control of inflation okay like by reducing the demand or by increasing the you know uh, supply in the economy and there are two main policies that is monetary policy and fiscal policy okay to control inflation so first let us discuss about monetary policy so what is monetary policy it's a policy of the central bank of india rbi and uh, which uh, act on government's uh, you know 
directions or government's orders. Why? Because it is the undertaking of the government and therefore, uh, it is uh, through mutual consent of the government and Reserve Bank of India that they take policy decision to control, you know, money supply or to control inflation in the economy. So, RBI control inflation only by controlling the money supply in the economy. Because by controlling the money supply, they can control the overall demand in the economy. Okay, so, based on the, this theory is based on the quantity theory of money. Now, when they control or they take different steps, then by taking those different steps, RBI try to reduce the supply of money in the economy and which in turn leads to you know, controlling of the demand from their side and which will lead to control of the prices because when demand goes down as we have seen in the demand pull inflation, then demand curve will shift and prices will go down. So, that is the you know base of uh, different instruments of monetary policy. Now, <coughs> What are the different uh, instruments of uh, monetary policy that uh, they use? So, basically these instruments are divided into two categories. One is quantitative measures and the other is qualitative measures. So, first if we talk about quantitative measures, so first is the bank rate, okay, first instrument in the hands of the Reserve Bank of India to control inflation. Now, what is bank rate? It is the rate at which central bank gives loan okay or long term credit to commercial bank. So, in this there are no securities which are required okay. Now, if there is a change in the bank rate then that will definitely affect you know the rate of interest. So, if RBI wants to control inflation they will increase the bank rate okay. By increasing the bank rate obviously when commercial bank will give more rate to the central bank then they in turn will increase the rate of interest. So, if there is increase in bank rate that will lead to increase in the rate of interest also. Now, if rate of interest increases then what happens people will take less loans, people may increase savings to earn more interest and both will lead to decrease in the money supply in the economy because if people will take less loan then the investments will also go down. Okay, money will be less in the circulation and people will have less money with them, their purchasing power will go down and demand will go down. Okay, so, that is how by increasing bank rate, uh, central bank or RBI controls the money supply in the economy and controls the inflation in the economy. So, if we see the today's present rate, then present repo rate is 5.40. Okay, what is repo rate short term loan by commercial bank from RBI? So, is the rate at which uh, commercial banks take short term loan from RBI keeping security for buyback. Reverse repo rate is 3.35 at present and this is when RBI buy securities from the commercial bank. Now, as I said that during uh, inflation bank rate increases which discourages commercial bank borrowing from uh, you know central bank, commercial bank increases their own interest rate discourages borrowing by people and encourage savings. So, that was bank rate. Another is open market operation. So, central bank buys and sells shares and securities in the open market okay, on the behalf of the government. So, during inflation what RBI does, what central bank does, it sells its own shares and securities in the open market. Now, why it sells? Because when RBI sells you know securities and shares in the open market, then commercial bank, other financial companies, public buy those you know bonds and securities. And if they buy those securities, that means money will transfer from public to RBI. So, that means money is going out from the circulation to banks or to RBI. And because of this uh, overall money supply in the economy will go down. Because when you purchase something, when you purchase bond, you have to pay money. Okay, so, when you pay money for buying these bonds, obviously money in your hand will go down. Your demand for other goods will go down. Supply of money overall in the economy will go down. 
okay and therefore what happens is the overall demand for the products and services goes down and which will lead to decrease in the prices in the economy and open market operation has the direct impact okay on the money supply because as we have seen other instruments it has a big chain okay there are various you know variables that will change and then that will lead to decrease in the demand but this has direct impact on the money supply and this is the fastest route you know to control money supply and to control demand in the economy another instrument is cash reserve ratio crr okay cash reserve ratio because central bank you know one of the function of the central bank is that that it is the bankers bank it's a government bank it's a bankers bank okay and commercial bank must keep a minimum some amount of money out of its total deposits with reserve bank okay and this uh, crr rate at present in india is 4.5% okay so what happens is when uh, rbi sees that yes there is a need to you know increase uh, the crr rate to control inflation they increases the crr rate and once they increase the crr rate then commercial banks are supposed to keep more cash you know with the central bank as the reserve out of their total deposits and therefore their loan amount goes down because now they will not be able to give more loan like suppose for example if before inflation they are supposed to keep 3% of their total deposits and now 4% so that means they are left 1% less of the amount to provide loan and therefore you know overall loan amounts goes down money supply goes down demand goes down and then prices goes down okay <coughs> another method is margin requirement and there is a, a slr also statutory liquidity ratio because uh, you know statutory liquidity ratio means minimum some percentage of the deposits uh, commercial banks are supposed to retain with them because what happens like when anybody wants to withdraw money those who have account with the bank a commercial bank cannot say no to them okay so they should have some liquid assets some liquidity with them so that they can meet the requirement of the people those who have the account with them so that minimum some percentage they have to maintain with them and at present you know this rate is 18% so 18% of the total deposits they are supposed to maintain with them in terms of you know liquid asset so at the time of inflation what they do uh central bank increases this uh, slr rate and when they increases slr rate they have to maintain more liquidity with them so they will able to give less loan and then again that same impact that money supply goes down and then demand goes down and they will be able to control price in the economy okay another is uh, in the consumer credit now loans for buying house car tv set etc is reduced during inflation that decreases you know down payments reduces time for uh, repayment of inst- uh, installments and all okay so that can be another way of controlling the money supply in the economy then there is direct action also like against uh, erring banks who do not follow the central banks directives they will not uh, grant them loans or help them during exigencies take over or closer of such institutions rbi can take action against them and lessen to others who disobey the you know rules and regulations issued by the reserve bank of india now what is the impact of monetary policy okay impact is that monetized economy and money market higher rate of interest will lead to luxury goods not affected pass on higher cost uh, of borrowing to the public okay and price rises in that case for these products then investment in capital formation will go down growth rate falls why because you know there there is a direct relationship between moderate rate of inflation and the economic growth because when due to this monetary policy instruments or for any policy instrument for that matter when prices goes down then investments are discouraged investors will not invest much and 
because of this you know money multiplier effect will be less, investment multiplier effect will be less and because of that that may hamper overall growth of the economy. Okay, then another policy to control inflation is the fiscal policy. Now, fiscal policy the major uh, you know instruments in the hands of uh, government is the government expenditure, taxation, borrowings and all. So, first if we talk about government expenditure, then at the time of inflation, when they want to control inflation, they want to control prices, then they reduces their government expenditure. Government has to cut down their unnecessary expenditure, reduces pumping more money into the economy. Why? Because uh, if the government expenditure increases, then people will have more money in their hands. And if they have more money, they are going to demand products out of it. So, if they decreases the government expenditure, then that will lead to decrease in the money supply in the economy. And another impact like as we have also discussed deficit, okay, fiscal deficit or budgetary deficit. So, if government expenditure decreases, their deficit amount will also be less. Okay, so, therefore, that will help in controlling inflation. Another is uh, increase in the direct tax rate because taxation is another instrument in the hands of the government to control inflation. Okay, there are two types of taxes like direct tax and indirect tax. Direct tax, they will increase the direct tax rate like income tax is the best example of the direct tax. Why government will increase the direct tax? Because increase in the direct tax will lead to fall in the disposable income. Because disposable income is income after tax and that is the income that we can spend and we can dispose of or which we can use you know in purchasing goods and commodities and services, goods and services. So, therefore, when government feel that they have to control the inflation, they will increase the direct tax rate which in turn will lead to decrease in the disposable income. When disposable income goes down, the demand goes down. And if demand goes down, they will be able to control prices in the economy. So, they will increase the direct tax rate. Then about indirect tax rate, at the time of inflation, government will not increase the indirect tax rate. Why? Because if they increases the indirect tax rate, that will have direct impact on the price and increase in indirect tax rate means directly increasing the prices of those commodities. Okay, so, direct indirect tax will not be increased, but there will be increase in the direct tax rate to control inflation okay, by fiscal policy. Another instrument in the hands of the government is public borrowing. Public borrowing removes you know, cash with the public. High rate of interest government can give to encourage people you know, to invest in the government bonds, government securities okay, or they will give tax benefit to the government, uh, to the general public. Okay. So, government will try to increase the public borrowing. It is a tie, uh, direct you know related to open market operation because government will sell their government securities bonds so that people will buy more and if they buy more money will shift from public to the government and that will help in reducing you know. Uh, the money supply in the economy and that will help in controlling the demand and prices in the economy. And to encourage people uh, okay, to invest more in government bonds, government will increase the interest rate, government will give them tax benefit and other benefits also, insurance benefit, okay, so that people are encouraged uh, to lend money to the government. Okay, so, these are the main measures. Then government also help you know increase the supply of goods in the economy because that is the other side of the story because more we are talking about only the demand side but supply side is also there if we could increase the supply of goods in the economy then that will also help in controlling the prices. So, why to control only demand? Why to decrease the demand? Why not we increase the supply? Okay, so, government can make investment more uh, in the economy so that they can supply more goods okay, in the economy and if supply increases then that will also lead to increase in the supply of the commodities and 
you know that will help in controlling the price uh, in the economy then government investment and encouragement in essential good production should also increase because government can incentivize people investors those who are investing in the you know essential goods government can give them tax benefit government can give them easy uh, you know credit uh, and like now you know that uh, our modi ji is government they are motivating encouraging startup india they are increasing uh, encouraging investors they want people to invest money they want people to you know generate employment they want them to produce goods okay they want them to make india self reliable so that we can increase the supply we can increase the income of the people also and that will help in the economic growth of the economy so it's not that that only decreasing demand will control inflation but increasing the supply of goods can also be helpful you know in controlling inflation in the economy so control like overall increase in the wage and salaries but that has a negative impact because everyone you know want hike in their wage rate hike in the salaries so control over increase uh, uh, in wages and salary may be one of the way to control inflation but this will give negative impact on the economy okay then government can also subsidize essential goods and services because if government subsidize then that goods can be made available to the public at subsidized rate but this is also not the permanent solution it's a, just the temporary solution it can be a temporary remedy okay at the time of inflation but not the permanent solution to the problem now if we talk about developing economies then economic growth is you know essential for any developing economy so large scale investment in heavy basic infrastructure is required long term gestation period is there for investment then income and demand for necessities increases output are not increasing so these are the you know main features of uh, any developing economy and there you know the basic uh, aim is to have more economic growth like suppose if we talk about indian economy it's a developing economy and we target high growth rate in the economy and if we are targeting you know high growth rate then moderate inflation will also be always helpful because the problem is that if you try to control inflation then the problem of unemployment arises okay and in country any developing country and specifically country like india at the cost of you know unemployment sometimes inflation cannot be controlled because Uh, if you try to control inflation investment goes down unemployment rate will also increase and there is direct relationship between these two so when we are deciding policy makers are deciding they have to take care of both these you know parameters and they have to prioritize that what is the priority to control inflation or to accept the unemployment that will increase if we control the inflation okay so according to the priority then we have to policy makers have to take policy decision okay so economics is not that you know simple or it's a very complex phenomena you try to control one that will have side effect on the other side so therefore we have to go for policy mix so that you can control the side effects you know by other policy measures okay so this is how you know economy works we will keep on discussing you know more about these topics so today we closed our discussion here and we will meet again we will have more discussion on this same topic again so thank you so much thank you